know, that's like old English. Um, yeah. All right. So the first thing I just want to review with you guys, if you guys can see this problem over here, um, what we're actually going to do is find the zeros, multiplicity, and then graph the function without using graphing technology. Now, in in earlier in the first focus lessons we did, we did problems like this, finding the zeros. If you guys remember to find the zeros, what we did was we replaced f of x with zeros. That was the first step. That wasn't that bad. Oops, let's change that to minus. Okay. Then, since we have factored form set equal to zero, we could apply the zero product property and set each factor equal to zero. Would everybody agree with me? Yes? Then, we could go ahead and solve. x equals one. x equals negative one. And x equals plus or minus uh, two. I'm just kind of doing a little bit of work. I'm not... Uh, um, I'm not showing every step because I am a little short on time. Now, what multiplicity does is now we're going to talk about the multiplicity. Does the graph, at each of those x-intercepts, does it graph or rebound? So what we have to do is go back to the factors or the power of the factor and determine what the multiplicity is. Here the multiplicity is 1. So we say multiplicity is equal to 1, which is odd. Here the multiplicity is 2, which is even multiplicity. Here, this actually wasn't factored all the way down. A lot of students will think that you see the two and they'll say, oh, it's even multiplicity. No, no, no. It's the power of the factor. Now, these could actually be factored down into x minus 2, x plus 2, where they'd both have a multiplicity of 1. But you could use the square root method. Just know that both those have a multiplicity of 1. Um, so therefore, that's odd. Now, how can you graph this then, just knowing multiplicity, zeros, and? Uh, well, you need to know n behavior. So let's first list all the zeros. So we have a 0 at 1. We have a 0 at 2. And we have zeros at, wait a minute, we have 1, sorry, negative 1, 2, and negative 2. Does everybody agree with me? Those are all my zeros. Yes? At 1, it's odd, so that means it crosses. At 2, I'm sorry, at negative 1, it's even. That means it bounces. And then at plus or minus 2, it's odd, so therefore it crosses. Now, we need to look at our n behavior. If you were to multiply this out, what would be my degree of this polynomial if you were to multiply this all out? Well, x plus 1 squared would give us x, x squared. And then times another binomial with x would give us x cubed. And then multiplied by another squared would give us x to the fifth. And all the leading coefficients are positive 1. So that's going to give me positive 1. Now, if I have x to the fifth, that means I have an odd power with a leading coefficient that's positive. Using my leading coefficient test, I know that this graph falls left rises right. So my n behavior looks something like this. Right? Now watch. All I'm going to do is connect my two n behavior arrows through the zeros and then follow the pattern. So it has to go through here. So I go through here. It has to bounce here. So bounce, cross, cross. Now the graph looks something like that. Okay, and if you guys don't believe me, I will plug it into Desmos. 